Hello, hello. Uh, well, welcome to a little look at uh, genes that are uh, located on the same chromosome. Now, if genes are neighbors with one another on the chromosome, uh, then that's going to affect uh, the probability of them being inherited uh, with one another. Uh, in the case of linked genes, genes found uh, on the same chromosome uh, that are inherited together, uh, that probability of inheritance is due um, proportionally to the um, distance between uh, the genes of, of note. So if you look at the image uh, that we see here uh, on the screen, these two red genes uh, have quite a bit of a distance between them, physical distance between them, uh, but these two green genes are, are rather uh, close uh, in proximity to one another. So when crossing over occurs, genes that are located further from one another uh, are more likely to be exchanged between uh, homologous chromosomes or non-sister chromatids than are genes that are uh, physically located close to one another. So that is the essence uh, of linked genes. Genes that are linked are physically close to one another on a chromosome and they tend to be inherited together uh, despite uh, the events of crossing over. Okay. Uh, now, um, if two genes are completely linked, you would expect to see uh, those genes um, inherited together uh, always. Now, if two genes are on separate chromosomes, then that will certainly lead uh, to different effects. Um, so if we think of, uh, let's say, let's draw a couple of chromosomes here. Let's imagine we have two different uh, chromosomes. Say this is chromosome 1, this is chromosome 20, and you have a particular gene on chromosome 1 and a different gene on chromosome 20. And then, uh, you know, you have the homologous chromosomes from uh, the other parent on the other side of the metaphase plate. Well, if the question is, what are the odds that these two particular copies are going to be inherited together? Well, it's 50-50, right? The odds of how these uh, chromosomes are going to line up on the metaphase plate is 50-50 uh, odds. So unlinked genes or genes on different um, non-homologous chromosomes have 50-50 odds of being inherited together. Genes that are linked together are located on the same chromosome, or at least close enough uh, to one another uh, to be inherited together, have a recom or, I'm sorry, have an inheritance rate together of greater than 50%. Now, uh, Hunt Morgan saw this in the test uh, of his fruit flies. Now, um, he crossed uh, flies that were wild type for body color, gray body, and wings, and his normal length wings. Uh, and he crossed them against mutant or doubly mutant uh, flies that had black body color uh, and the vestigial of these uh, reduced wings. So notice that in the cross between these individuals that were uh, homozygous, they created uh, F1 offspring that were heterozygous for these uh, two genes. Uh, since they were heterozygous, they still had the wild type uh, phenotype. Now he then performed a test cross with the F1 generation where he took this hybrid fly and mated it with, uh, again, a doubly mutant uh, fly. And um, what would have been expected if these uh, two genes, the B and BG genes, uh, were completely linked, you'd expect uh, the offspring to all appear like um, either of the parents. They'd either have the uh, gray normal wing or black vestigial wing appearance. And uh, if the genes were on different chromosomes and you have the uh, increased uh, number of possibilities in terms of offspring, you'd expect to see a one to one to one to one uh, ratio between the different possibilities. Now, uh, what Morgan observed was actually something sort of in between uh, those two expectations. Um, when they counted up their flies, they found that a vast majority of them had the two parental genotypes. Uh, so that indicated to them that the genes were linked, the genes were found on the same uh, chromosome, but there was a small percentage of the offspring that had a unique combination of traits, whether gray in vestigial wings or black with the normal length wings. Uh, and the conclusion that uh, Hunt Morgan was able to draw is that some event is exchanging uh, these genes uh, at some point during gamete formation. We now know this is crossing over. Now, um, the calculation of this rate of uh, recombination, uh, what we call it, where 
Uh, you take the uh, original genes and, and shuffle them around during, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, during crossing over. Um, is calculated by counting up, simply counting up the total number of offspring that have a unique combination of traits or recombinant traits and dividing that by the total uh, number of offspring produced and that gives you some uh, recombination um, frequency. Okay. Now, um, again, we know this recombination occurs when crossing over happens during prophase one of meiosis. You wind up with some gametes that will contain a unique combination of genes, whereas other gametes will have combination of genes like those of their parents. Now, um, Mendel, I'm sorry, Mendel, uh, Morgan um, looked at uh, the matings of these flies, but we can add to that our sort of understanding of the chromosomes. So we know that uh, in this uh, F1 uh, test cross uh, that the mutant uh, male had two recessive uh, copies for each gene, while the uh, uh, wild type uh, female was heterozygous. So she had, you know, a dominant copy and a recessive copy, or wild type and uh, mutant copy. Uh, because of the crossing over that occurred, some of the gametes ended up having uh, combinations of uh, genes that were unlike those of their parents. So again, we get these recombinant offspring. And uh, you can uh, see from the numbers here, uh, they just took the total number of offspring that had the unique combination of traits uh, and divided that by total number of offspring multiplied by 100, and that gives them the recombination frequency. So yeah, the genes uh, are oftentimes uh, inherited together, okay? What, 83% uh, of the time uh, they're inherited together, but there is uh, opportunity for uh, recombination to occur. Now linkage maps allow us to get a sense of the relationships or the spatial relationships between uh, genes on a chromosome. We can do that by calculating this uh, rate of recombination. If there is a high rate of recombination we can assume that genes are very far apart from one another because they'll likely be exchanged during crossing over. If genes have a low rate of recombination uh, then they're very likely close to one another on the chromosome, so they're less likely to be split up during crossing over. Now, um, these distances uh, are represented in map units, or using map units, uh, and one map unit um, represents a 1% uh, change in the recombination frequency. So 10 map units means there's a 10% recombination frequency. 75, uh, let's say 60, um, uh, 60 map units represents a 60% recombination frequency or 49% recombination frequency. Uh, now, this is important to mention though that looking at these map units and recombination frequencies does not uh, give the precise location of a particular gene on the chromosome. It only indicates the, the relative uh, positions of the chromosomes. So you can look at this example. You know, we, we talked about the recombination rate between uh, the gene for body color and the gene for wings and said that it is 17%. Now we can add to that recombination rates for this uh, cinnabar gene, uh, this you know, gene that influences eye color, brightly colored eyes. Uh, we can look at the recombination frequency between body color and cinnabar and see that it's about 9%. And look at the uh, recombination frequency between uh, wing length and cinnabar and see it's about 9.5%. So we see that these are not uh, exact numbers or the numbers that give us exact locations but it does allow us to uh, discern relationships in terms of spatial arrangement of these genes. So we know that there is a greater distance between uh, the B and VG genes than there are between the uh, V and G and uh, cinnabar and uh, the B and cinnabar genes. So we just try to make the, uh, all the relationships work out and what that does is give you again the relative positions of these genes on the chromosomes.